Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at something really interesting. It's the Cam Switch 2. And what it does is it allows you to take two camera inputs, like these two cameras here, and switch between them in a split second. So this is the board. You can see it's got two MIPI inputs and then one MIPI output that goes to the VTX. I'll take it out and we'll look at it closer later. What can we use this for? In this example, I have two cameras. One has an IR block filter and one has an IR block filter removed. And what do we do with that? Well, at night, we can shine an IR LED. That's what this is. And the camera that does not have an IR filter is going to pick up that IR light. And you're going to be able to fly very easily in the dark. Then for daytime flying, you'll switch to the main camera here, which does have an IR filter and it will give you the best image quality because cameras see IR light and it will turn the image into a red wash. Uh, so we put an IR cut filter on there. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. You go into beta flight, go to the modes tab, and then you can scroll down and you'll find something called camera control one, two, and three. So on the radio, I have this switch aux four set up to switch between the different modes. So here, camera one, camera two, camera three. In this case, we just have two cameras, so it'd be camera one and camera two. This also works on iNav and ArduPilot, but I haven't tested it myself. So this is an example where we've got a camera facing downward and a camera facing forward, and then we're gonna drop these two drones while we look at where they're dropping. Just kind of fun thing to do. All right, so you, on the right, you can see the, the two drones that we're gonna drop, and here we're looking at the forward facing camera of the main drone. And I'm gonna skip forward here and we'll take a look at the, the drop. Okay, so switch and it switches instantly. And then you can see we drop that drone and then we're gonna switch over here back to the main view and it'll switch almost instantly. There it goes. And then I'll skip forward here and you'll see the second drop. All right, so we're gonna switch to the down view. It just switched immediately and switched back. So pretty easy, pretty cool. So here's another example of how to use this. So I've got a two camera setup, one with the IR filter removed. That's what you're looking at. And now we just switched to the main camera with IR on there and then IR off. One interesting thing here is even without an IR light, you can see the IR filter removed is easier to see. The flashing is this Patrios light. Uh, now the Patrios light is like IR on, and you can do like normal LEDs on, but this is the IR light. And now the IR light's off. And you can see how well you can see in the dark if you remove this uh, IR filter. And then there, there's the normal camera. So here again is the board installed into a drone. You can see here, I've got a white MIPI cable that's leading back to my video transmitter. And then I've got two camera MIPI cables coming in as the input. The board has a 20 by 20 mounting pattern so that you can install it on top of a 20 by 20 stack. I've opted to just place it towards the front of the drone because I have the short MIPI cables on the camera. And then the back side of this is relatively unpopulated, so it wasn't too bad to, to tape it to this location. Later on, we'll take a look at the board closer, but that gives you a pretty good overview of how it works. There's multiple ways to configure this, including a way to run it uh, daisy chained, so you can actually have more than two cameras, and another way to change the camera that is selected with a jumper that's on here, so you don't have to use the VTX with a flight controller. So we'll look, we'll look at all that later, and let's move over to the manual. So here is the manual for the camera switcher. And let's scroll down a little bit and get into the details. So one of the things that I really should point out is this is a cool project that was actually developed by the community. It is made by Avi and Whitey. <laughs> and I think it's really cool that they saw a need for this and decided, hey, you know what, we're just going to make it. So it's got some fun bits of flair, let's call it. In the, in the PCB layout. So here's a smiley face that you can see uh, with some status LED lights. Uh, so that maps to the uh, pads for the VTX manual control um, well, up here. 
So walking through the pins here, we've got uh, number one is the VTX MIPI connector. And then uh, we've got camera one input, camera two input. Uh, up here for number four is how you do the manual control without using a flight controller to be able to select a camera. And then five is a jumper that you're gonna bridge if you want to enable manual control instead of using the um, flight controller to control things. And then uh, this last bit here, the board, while it does not contain gluten and it is gluten free, you should not eat it. So it's powered off of the VTX, so you don't have to provide any external power if you don't want to. It's got the 20 by 20 mounting pattern. There's no soldering required. You just connect all your MIPI cables and think it powers up and just works. It's really cool. So in the standard configuration, you'll just be able to do camera control one, two, three. Um, in this case, just camera one and two, and it will switch between things. But if you want, you can use the manual override jumper and then drive this through a uh, external means. This is another way you can set it up and manual control. So there's a lot of ways that you can configure this, including uh, the ability to power it up uh, separately. Here's all the details on the jumper pads. Um, you could really dig into this manual and, and find a lot of uh, unique ways to use it. I just use the default, which is nice and simple. So that is the camera switch two for HD zero cameras. And I should note, there's an important thing that you need to consider. If you want it to work its best, you want to use the same types of cameras from like the same generation, let's say. So that's going to mean use two micro V3 cameras or two nano 90 cameras or two HD 90 cameras. That's going to be the fastest switch time. If you use different cameras, it might work, but it might be slow to switch between them. Now, speaking of switching between them, if you leave this powered on for a very long time, like 10 or 20 minutes, you'll find that the switching time between things it increases. And that is because over time, the clock on the two cameras is gonna drift apart from each other a little bit. And so when the VTX switches between the two and then the, everything syncs up again, it will take a little bit longer. Like instead of a split second, it might take a half a second or a second, depending on how far apart they've drifted. So I think about a second would be the maximum that it takes to switch between them. And then when you first power it on for the first, you know, three minutes or something like that, you're going to see that it switches almost instantly. So it's really interesting. Some use cases for this. It's the ones I showed, of course, but also think about installing this in an RC car and you've got a forward looking camera and then maybe you flick a switch and you get an instant rear view mirror camera where you can look behind yourself. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe you could even program it so that when you look up, it will kind of be like looking into the rear view mirror and it'll switch cameras for you. So you can get pretty creative with it. Maybe another one would be, you could have a really long zoom lens on one camera and you could have a really wide angle lens on another camera and switch between those two so that you can get the, you know, nice zoom factor if that's what you're after. Uh, rather than uh, putting in some kind of a zoom camera, you could just have two cameras that have two different focal length lenses. And then I think a pretty compelling one was you could remove the IR block filter from one of your cameras, and then you have a really good night vision camera, especially if you supplement it with an IR LED. And then you could flip a switch and then have a perfect daytime camera. So lots of cool possibilities with this. You know, for the right person, this is going to make a really big change in how you use FPV with a HD0 system. Where can you buy it? You can buy it at HD0 resellers and HD0, of course. The price globally and in the United States is $29.99. And buying one of these is going to help support the guys that help make it. Thank you again to AVI Physics, Avi, and to Here Comes Whitey for seeing the need for this product and designing it and getting it to market. That is really cool. And then I, I almost forgot, but Jeff Sim 
is the man that did the programming on this, the open source dev that did the programming to enable switching cameras um, almost instantly. And it's just really cool how easy and sim seamless it is to do that. Thank you for your work on this. So that's all I've got. If you want to buy one, links will be in the description and have a great day.